Welcome to another tying session. I'm going to show you a little mayfly imitation or emerging mayfly that I fish on very clear water for both trout and yellowfish. Works very well in Starkfontein and it's a actually a little nymph that sits in the surface for them. Um, I quite like fishing emerges. Pretty sure you know that by now. Uh, and you start by tying a tail onto the onto the bend of the of the hook just just before the bend. I'm using a grip one four five eight two, which is actually a small hopper hook. Uh, that's the one four five eight two. And I'm tying it in size 14. I tie them in sort of 14s and smaller. I don't tie them much bigger than this. And uh, it's at that stage of the mayfly when it sits in the surface film about to emerge and spread its wings. And again, I'm going to be using the uh, hackle stack technique. So I'm using a um, Vulturine guinea fowl for the tail. And you want something that will that will go in below the surface. Vulturine guinea fowl is nice and soft, and it will sit. Uh, it will it will uh, it will not prevent the fly the abdomen from from going down below the surface, which is what you want. You want the abdomen to sit below the surface, and that's also the part of the of a um, pretty much any insect that hatches that where it's the most vulnerable. So we're going to tie a goose by it abdomen. When I tie it in smaller sizes, I I more often use a um, stem of a of a hackle, strung saddle hackle, something like that. Um, but in this instance, I'm going to be using a, a goose by it. Creates nice segments. You wrap that, and there is a. a a video on goose bites. I'll post the link below on how to prepare them for um, when you want to use them as a um, as an abdomen material. And it's quite a it's it's just in a little bit more detail on what you can do with them to make sure they tie easier. In fact, this is not a goose bite; it's a um, turkey bite. They are a little bit longer and easier to work with. But it, the video applies to both goose bites and turkey bites. You create that nice segmented abdomen. Cut the excess off. Now, you want this to sit below the surface and with a wing on top of the surface. Now, for the wing, I'm going to use a, a hackle stack technique where I'm going to be tying it with a hackle. You can use a parachute. Um, with this kind of fly, I prefer a hackle stack rather than a parachute, uh, and you'll see why. There's also a link that I'll post down below for a little bit more to a video that, that just shows you a little bit more detail on the hackle stack technique. It's a very, very nice technique to use for emergers. Um, I kind of prefer that rather than a parachute. Tie in. Uh, two pieces of nylon of monofilament. I use about a 4 or 5x monofilament. Move that out of the way, just keep that there. And you're going to tie two goose bites on top of the hook, but one on the left hand side, one on the right hand side, or one on the side on your side, and one on the far side. And But both on top. Because that is going to form the wing case. This fly is going to be tied with hackle and with the wing case. It's at that stage when the wing case opens up and the the wings start to come out of the wing case. And when that fly sits in the surface film where it's really vulnerable and easy for any fish to eat. Tie that in there, 
and then and tie it back a little bit further right there and there we're going to tie in a heckle now the size of the heckle that you'll be using will depend on the or the size of the wings you want will depend on the size of the heckle you're using and I'm going to be using a, I, I use a, a whiting dry fly saddles I believe they are the best out there it's quite important that you use a very good quality saddle uh, for the simple reason that you want this fly to sit on the surface film or the wing to sit on top of the surface film holding the the abdomen or the nymph part above, uh, below, uh, um, holding it up close to the surface. Now you tie that in there and then you wrap the hackle around the, the monofilament. You need to make about 12 wraps. Just make sure they slide down nicely towards the bottom and keep wrapping need to be quite tight as well that's about enough and then you wrap down take the hackle and you go down so you overlap and you go down Now this is going to be right there. This is going to be a nice wing, sort of the latest stage of the emerging phase where the wing will be a little bit bigger and more pronounced on the water. Uh, if you want a smaller wing earlier in the, in, the, in the emerging phase or stage, then you use a smaller or narrower hackle or saddle um, and that um, and I often when I tie the smaller ones or the smaller when I want a smaller wing I want the abdomen to sit a little bit differently in the water not as horizontal as this hook will, it will as, as the case will be with this hook so then I would tie it on something like the grip 14428 where, the, where it's a, a wider bend with a slightly shorter shank and the, and the uh, shank will actually push the hook down, the, the abdomen a little bit further down. It's going to be a little bit more vertical position. So it also, it's also important that you select the right hook depending on how you want the fly to sit and what you want the fly to do in the water and in the surface fill and that will also depend on, the, st on the, the stage of that emerging phase that you're imitating. Now, once you've done that, you need to create the thorax. And I'm going to be doing that with a dark brown grip trilobal dubbing. Very thin thorax. Uh, do that. It's a very fine synthetic dubbing, very nice for dry flies. And you wrap that around the hook in the thorax area, build up that thorax and finish it off in the front. And then you're going to pull that hackle over, brush all those fibers back, pull that over and tie that off right there secure that with a few wraps make sure those ends are nicely tied in and now to create the wing case you're going to fold those goose biots forward underneath the hackle and tie them off in the front. That will push the hackle up a little bit. Still showing a, a wing case in the fly. 
because this fly is not out of the shuck yet. Pull that in there. Secure that with one or two wraps of thread. And then the other side. Pull that around and secure that with one or two wraps of thread. Just try not to trap the, the hackle barbs. It's, it's, it's very difficult not to trap them. That, that's not a train smash, you can always cut them away. And you make sure those are well secured and trim the goose by it. Just pull those hackles away and create a nice thin small head. And then you and then you tie it off. Now this fly is it's basically a nymph sitting in the surface film unweighted with uh, uh, its wings a busy hatching with its wings coming out and drifting in the in the wind or on the on the surface and there's obviously there's no retrieve on this fly you cast it out it's very nice to sight fish to those to those cruising yellowfish or trout when they get locked onto emerging mayflies uh, this kind of pattern is a very successful pattern i found it to be very successful and i always carry a variety of them in my box in uh, black blue dun a creamy color tan those sort of colors and in different sizes i tie them in the bigger sizes I'll tie on the GRIP 14582 and size 14s but as soon as I go to size 16s and 18s I tend to tie them on on a, a GRIP 14428BL which is slightly slightly different profile. Now I will do a video on the uh, smaller one on the GRIP 14428 and that's the emerging mayfly. Please subscribe to the channel, please follow the the channel like the video and keep an eye out for more of these videos